this, haven't you? Yeah. Hey everyone, well welcome back to my YouTube channel. Today we're going to build a uh, kind of a fun project. It's a uh, six-sided project. It's called a spinner. It's uh, made out of uh, six panels and they're all soldered together on a 45 degree angle which creates a, a different looking effect. Today we're going to use a, probably a really unconventional way to do this. Uh, as you can see, I don't have a plan here yet, but I have something in my mind we're going to do. So we're going to do some uh, what, what I call cut and stack, where I don't care exactly where it goes or how big it gets. So I'm going to draw something up really quick here. But uh, how I got decided to do this project is I was going through all my scrap glass, and I found lots of little pieces that were big enough to make one square inch. So I took and I cut a whole bunch of them. So here's a whole box full of one by one pieces of, of square glass. Also in that same box, I had a lot of clear iridescent that was too small to do anything as far as making a bigger project. And I cut those all into three quarter inch strips. So got a whole bunch of these. And the only glass I use that uh, that's not scrap glass is down in each corner of this project. It's going to have a, a, a square down here in the corner here. And uh, so I, I had to cut that out of a larger sheet. But anyway, so to get started on this project, uh, we're just going to take our T-square here. And I'm just going to draw right here, going to draw a right angle. I'm not going to put any dimensions on it. So we're, we'll see where this goes from here. But what we're going to do around the outside edge here, we're going to put a three-quarter inch border. This is the... Uh, Angle aluminum I've been using in other videos, uh, half inch across this side, three quarters here. So we're going to do a three quarter border here. So here again, like I said, we're not going to measure this. We're just going to figure out where this goes when we start to build it. So we're going to build this right here. And this is really pretty unconventional because normally what you do is you would draw a pattern and cut the glass to fit the pattern. In this case, we're going to we're going to take the glass that we've already cut and make a pattern to fit it. So in this area here, I don't know how long this is going to be, but the one inch pieces that go in here are going to be, there's going to be three of them. So this will tell me how long to make this next, the, the, the iridescent glass by making this line go up here. I'm going to make this line go up here. And we're going to come across the top here. It's going to be here. Here. And here. And I'm going to add one more here. So it'll be, a, it'll be a, a three by three here. So this will go right here. So that's going to tell me how long to make our iridescent here. This one here is going to run all the way across here. Like that. I probably shouldn't have drawn that line right there because that's where our square is going to go. Uh, get an eraser real quick here and we'll take that out of there. Well, I can just scribble it out of there. So our... Uh, larger piece of glass right here is going to go in here, right in here like this. So that'll be where that's going to fit in there. As you can see here, it's already sticking out a little bit because as we add the lead to this project, that's going to push these on out. So uh, that's, why that, that's why that doesn't line up right there. So anyway, we're not going to use this to lay it out on or anything. What we're going to do, we're going to go right to our work table here. All right, we're back. So I put my form in here. Uh, I just used my regular uh, carpenter square here, and I needed to use a little spacer here to move it up. So that just was sitting in, sit in here like this, and uh, make sure it's all square. And then I bring this over to get my 
right angle here. You notice we've left a gap here in the middle, and that's where the hanger is going to go, right here in the middle. So we want to be sure to leave that open so we can get our hanger in here. And if you've watched any of my other videos, you'll notice I use a, a, a 332nd steel cotter pin. It's uh, zinc plated. Looks just like this one here. And uh, the way that works, just take your pair of long nose pliers, insert it into the loop, have a small piece of brass tubing it's three thirty seconds across the opening here you just take and you pull this up and we're going to make this into a 45 so i'm just going to kind of eyeball this real quick turn it over to the other side and we're going to go up here like this and maybe just a little bit more and we can check this by holding it right here and that's what we want it to look like. We want it to go right against those two surfaces. Now, we're going to do this in the U-came that goes around the outside edges here. So this is the, the, the lead that makes the U-shape. This is a quarter inch across the web, 3 sixteenths across the crown. So anyway, I'm going to uh, cut this line on a, on a 45 degree angle. And then I'm also going to notch it here with two notches. And that's where the cotter pin this leg will go down inside underneath the came here so uh, it goes all the way down into here so it gives you a, a lot of strength so we're going to put that in here so what we're going to do we're going to just take the first one here we're going to insert it here and i'm going to take my cotter pin i'm going to set it in here pull it down and i'm going to hold it up here so i can get this in here like this and then i'm just going to insert this in there just like that uh, I use this this kind of a hanging uh, thing for the whole project, sir, that I make, uh, whether it's sun catchers or solar lanterns or whatever I'm making. Uh, I started making these. I came up with this idea about 25 years ago. Uh, we lived in uh, Lake Havasu City, Arizona, a lot of wind out there. I was always kind of afraid that the little wire ring would uh, maybe uh, come unsoldered and, and fall off. So this is pretty foolproof because our legs are going back underneath here. We're going to solder this shut. So it's going to be pretty difficult for this to get out of there. So I've decided on our drawing, we're going to take and we're going to uh, put a little piece of turquoise blue right here in the corner. So I've uh, got a piece right here and I've taken, I've ground this back on these two sides and I put it just a little, not the point out of here. The reason for that is we have to make room for that cotter pin in there. If we don't, if we don't grind it back, then then this one here is going to be pushed out, and our 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 edge will go down and then drop in like that. So we don't want to do that. So I'm going to put this one right in here, just like that. And I'm going to cut a little piece of H came now. This is the one that's going to go in here like this. And then I'm going to take our iridescent glass here and here again now that iridescent glass because the leg is still coming down to about here on that cotter pin we need to grind it back so i've already ground that back right here you can see it right here um, i'll put a straight edge on it and you can see it here see the gap we have in there right here okay so that's going to let this slide down into here like this Don't let your lead curl over like that. Okay. I think what I'm going to do, I think I'm going to run one uh, a long ways to start with here. Just put it in here. We'll run this little piece here over here. Pull that in there like that. I'm going to just take a piece of old U-came and stick in here like that. I don't want to put my pins right against it. Because the pins will uh, chip the glass, so we don't want to do that. So this one here is going to go right in here. Here again, the leg on this cotter pin going down here. So this one here, we're going to need to cut it back, and I've also ground it back. Sometimes when you push this in, uh, it wants to run into the cotter pin because the cotter pin, after you put this in here, kind of pulls out a little bit. You can take your little tubing. Just come in here into the inside of the came, push that in like that. 
once you once you've brought it down and you've cleared you've cleared the end of the uh, cotter pin make sure you put that in the right you clear the end of the cotter pin here then you can push it back in here so that gives us the start for our project I'm going to pin it right here now we're going to run a piece of h came up here just like that here again i'm leaving these long intentionally because i don't know exactly where they're going to come out because every time you add lead to the project it gets bigger and since we're doing a cut and stack idea, we don't care if it gets a little bit bigger. We're just going to let it go on out. So we're going to put our one inch pieces in here. Uh, we're going to start off with a green one here. This is just at random. I've cut a piece of H came to go here. We're going to put a wispy blue one here. And we're going to finish it off with kind of a yellow, a yellow looking one. I'm putting all of the textured side up on the project. So it's going to go right like that. And we're going to take and stick in a piece of uh, H-came right here. This is a good time now to tell exactly how long to make this. I'm just going to leave this piece of U-came here. That's how it's going to finish out. So they can see that this is where this is going to cut right here. So I'm going to take, we'll take and cut one and put it in here like this. Take and mark it. And when you cut your lead, I'm using a pair of lead dikes to cut it with. You want it to fit in nice and tight, but you don't want it to pinch. You can see that's just a little bit too long right there. So we'll just trim this back just a little bit. Like that. And then we'll come across here. Going to put an orange one here, another piece of H came. I'll move this pin out of here, and we'll put a little purple one right here. From here, we can take and run a piece of H. Uh, pardon me, a piece of U came up here, and then we need to cut a piece to go across here. I've already got one that I cut real quick goes in here like this and then our corner piece which is right here this one here is going to slip down in between here and if we did this properly this is probably not going to work with that this needs to be cut off here okay it comes in where it's supposed to go right there So here's going to match up. Now what this does is tells us how long to make these two pieces, how long to cut our lead. And uh, what we'll do, we'll go offline. We'll cut all the lead for this. When we come back, we'll have some stacks of lead. And we're going to assemble these all together at one time. Uh, we'll make six of them. All of them, the, the other five won't have a hanger on them. Just this one here just has the hanger on them. So we can just take our... T square and stick it in here. We can run it right up to the edge here, to our edge of our glass. We can mark this one where this is going to cut. We'll cut that one right there. And we can do the same thing over here. We can pull this out. Run this right up to the edge of our glass right here. And we can mark that. So those, are, that'll be where we'll cut those. So everything's going to end up square. So like I said, we're going to make six panels, five of them without a hanger, just the one with the hanger. And uh, the colored marks will be all mixed up as we go along. All of these little clear ones are going to end up in the center, and this will make a border all the way around our project when it goes together. So it good, uh, should be a good result. Uh, I'm going to take this all apart real quick and we'll measure our lead that we want to put in here and we'll go from there. So we, we're going to use a piece of uh, H came down the edge here so I can stick it in here like this and I can measure this one right here. So this is so I know where that one cuts off and uh, we'll have one that goes across here. 
so we'll know where this one cuts off. So we'll go from there. These I'm going to leave long out here on the edges, and I'll show you how we're going to finish those edges up when we get to it. All right, so we'll be back in a couple minutes. Uh, I'm going to cut enough lead to do all six panels, and uh, we'll be ready to go uh, in just a second. Okay, we're back. We've got all of our lead cut now. So we're, now we're ready to really assemble this together. So what we're going to do here, we're going to start right here at the bottom, and we're going to put in our hanger. So we're going to set this in here. Here again, this is the one where we have the notch cut in it. Set that in here. Pull our cotter pin down. We'll take the top piece and go across here. And since we did all those measurements, I know where to cut this one off now because that, that gives us a up piece right here. We're going to take our little blue one here, which has been ground down and cut to allow for the cotter pin to go in here. We're going to put in our little spacer here, and then we're going to put in our iridescent right here on the edge, like that. Then we're going to run a long one all the way along here. So we'll run this one right here like this. This is, gives us a room for our u came to go up here. And we're going to take this one here. I'm going to set it in here. Here again, this is the notch cut back to allow for the leg of the, the cotter pin. That's going to sit in there just like that. These ends up here, we're just going to leave them open like that for right now. And uh, we'll show you what we're going to do with those when we move along. Okay, so now we're going to need a piece of uh, up lead here. That one right there works good. Now we'll put our colors in. So we had a green one at the top here. The order of these is not important, but uh, we'll keep it kind of lined up like it was so that uh, won't be any confusion. The wispy blue one here goes in here. And then the yellow one's on the bottom. Here's the yellow one on the bottom. Okay, so that lines up nice there. This one here is a little bit too long right there. Just take your dikes and trim it back. There we go. Okay, so then we need a piece of lead to go in here. There it is. I'm going to go orange. Put a piece of lead here. That one there's too long too, so I didn't do a very good job cutting those. Of course, I guess it's better to have it a little bit longer. You can always trim it back than just to have it too short, because then you're in trouble. And the purple one's going to go on the end here. All right. Then we're going to take and we're going to put this right along here. Oops, that's the wrong one. So here's going to go right along here, and then our square one's going to go in here. Now, along here, we're going to run a piece of u came. So I cut some already. Uh, here they are. It's cut on a 45, and it's going to go in here just like this. Okay, now, since I want all these to be exactly the same, I'm going to take and I'm going to put in a piece of frame right here. And I want to check it to be sure it's square. So I'll get my square out and we'll run it up in here just to be sure. Now, because this little lip sticking out right here, I'm going to have to take another piece of form wood and bring it in here to uh, make this go square. Now, when I put the square up against this, I'm not going to put it up super tight. I just want to make sure it's square. If I make it too tight, I won't be able to get these pieces in and out. Okay, so that makes it, now, now we've got our form all together there. So now we're going to just take and we're going to tack this down. And that way, we'll just build them all right inside that frame. And we don't need to tack this down real super hard. Just like that. So now we'll build all of these exactly the same here. Put my square away. Now we'll put a piece of 
you came across the top here. That's the only one I didn't didn't cut. It's going to go in between here like this. Pull this around. Going to fit in there just like that. And then across the top here, I'm going to bring in a little header board. Move these out of the way here. I'm going to use my little blue T-square again here. And I want to be sure this is square. If it needs to be tapped in a little bit, you can tap it just a little bit. And then we'll take it, we'll pin it. Okay, so this is our first square right here. So it's got our hanger. These ends here, I'm going to show you what we're going to do with those. We're going to finish those off when we're done with it. So uh, let me get the uh, siren iron fired, fired up. And we'll come back and we'll show you how we're going to solder this up. So I'll be right back. Okay, we're back. we got the siren iron all fired up now. So now we're just going to go ahead and uh, solder up this front side of this. Like I said before, we're not going to solder up uh, the outside edges on the back or the top. So, because uh, we want those edges to be able to come together. So what we're going to do, if you've watched any of my other videos, I like to take a little stainless steel brush. brush and I like to kind of brush out our joints here just a little bit, knock off any oil or oxidation that may have got on the lead. Just gives you a little bit better solder joint. Most of the new lead is pretty good. I'm using a Classic 100 Liquid Flux. And I'm going to use a 60-40 solder. Just go ahead and flux up the, all the joints here. So I'm just going to take my iron. It's a Waller 100, 100 watt. It's got a 700 degree tip on it. I'm just going to take and tin it just like that. I'm going to start here right at this junction. I'm going to solder all four of these at one time. Take about an eighth of an inch right off your iron and just solder it just like that. Here's, an, here's another joint. Try to make the beads all about the same if you can. I'm taking off about an eighth of an inch off the end of my solder here. If you have one that sucks down like that, just go ahead and go over it again to get you a little bead. So soldering is one of those things where you just practice, 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 and uh, you get a technique down that you like yourself. I like this iron iron here because I don't need to use a wrist stat to uh, vary the temperature on it. The tip itself is fixed at 700 degrees. And uh, that's just about the right uh, temperature for lead. If you get much higher than that, uh, if you get up around 800 degrees, uh, as soon as you touch the... Uh, the lead, if you don't go real quick, you'll burn a hole in it. So you want to hang on to it like that. Okay, so that's what we want to do. You see how quick that is? It's going to go, these are going to go really, really fast. So let me get a little cloth here and just wipe this down just a little bit. Of course, the cloth, the cloth I picked up happens to have happen to have some whiting on it, so that's not not real good. Now on the back side here, uh, because it's got the hanger here, I can't really put it back down in here. So what I'm going to do here is I'm just going to solder up inside here. I'm not going to do any of the edges, and the reason for that is, as we said before, these are going to go together on a 45 degree angle, and if you do that, where the solder joints are, they're going to uh, interfere with your uh, edges and you won't get a nice clean edge it'll get big gaps in it so we don't want to do that so nobody's getting soldered on the edges here uh, this is plenty strong without without doing this if you just want to wait and do this at the end you can do that or you can do it now if you want to All right, let's see if I can't find a little better cloth to wipe that off with.
Here we go. This is a little better one. So this is the first panel for our for our uh, spinner. Like I say, we're going to make six of these. This is the only one that has a a hanger on it right there. And when we get ready to finish this up, we'll solder all the way around that hanger. So as you remember, the legs are coming down down inside of here. So uh, it won't be pulling out of there anytime soon. On the ends here, what we're going to do, if you watched any of my other videos also, uh, you'll notice that what we're going to do here, we're going to take this, take our dikes and we're going to cut in here. We're going to cut right here. I'm going to take this down on the edge of my work table. And I'm going to take that corner right there and bend it back in to fill up that gap. If you cut them off straight, then you've got to fill up the whole gap with solder. Uh, makes it just a little more uh, difficult. Okay, push that down. So now we got our ends here. So now I'm going to get a, a helper. I'm going to use a, a drill vise. Here, here again, if you watch some of my other videos, this is the drill vise here. Kind of prop this up here so it doesn't go too crazy here. And I'm going to put our project in here like this. And I'm going to tighten it up, but very lightly. I don't want to bust my glass. And I'm going to take here on the ends, I'm going to flux them up. And I'm just going to solder those shut. And then I'm going to put it on some 80 grit sandpaper. And I'm going to knock that back down so it's all smooth. So you won't see the what we've done here at all. Just like that. Okay. Now here, this edge right here, that gap right there. We're going to do the same thing. We're going to fill that up and we're going to solder around our cotter pin here. So I'm just going to take and put a little bit of solder right here. Fill that in just like that. Here I'm just going to put a little tin the iron a little bit, put it right here. And I'm just going to let it sit there for a second until it flows right around just like that. That sucks in and goes right around the cotter pin. Now I'm going to turn this over and do it on the other side here too. Just right here. Just put it on here on the angle. Just like that. Okay, now I'm going to take this. I'm going to go offline real quick. I'm going to put this on some 80 grit sandpaper. I'm just going to sand, move it back and forth on the sandpaper and it'll knock this down smooth. Now I'm going to take an emery board. And we're going to smooth these corners up real quick and uh, we'll go ahead and uh, finish this one up. Uh, if you have some that's like this where you've got a little bit too much solder on there, just heat it up and kind of give it a little flick and that'll move that off there. There we go. Okay, I'll be back in a second. We'll get this all cleaned up and we'll show you what it's going to look like. Okay, so I'm back. So now I, I cleaned up all the corners here. So you can see them here. I've just taken and chamfered them over, rounded them off a little bit. So now everything is closed up. So you don't have any open holes or any slots. And here's our hanger area all soldered up. So uh, it's going to be a real pretty one. Uh, this one, this goes together. This will be set on an angle when it hangs from here. And then it'll have another panel that's going to go out here. And it goes into a 45. So anyway, I'll go offline. I'm going to make five more just like this. The colors will be all different, but they're going to be the same. It's going to be made right in the same form right here. And then when we come back together, we'll show you how we're going to assemble them. All right, well, we've got all six of our panels done now. So now we're going to put them together. And they're going to go together in sets of two. I have a little jig made right here, which has a lip on it right here. And the lip is designed... So that when this piece is slid in here, the next piece that comes down on top of it will just kiss along the came here so that we don't have a gap in there. So this one here, 
which will be the next one to go in here. It's going to fit in here like this. This is the one with our hanger on it. So these two will go together and we'll solder them right here in this channel, right here in this channel right here. And we're just going to spot solder. We're not going to solder it solid. Uh, it doesn't need to be that, that, uh, that tight. So now we're going to go ahead and we'll take our soldering iron. I'm just going to tin it here just a little bit. And I'm going to push down on this. And I'm just going to put my soldering iron right here. Make sure it doesn't move on you like that. If you think it's going to move on you, take a couple of pins here and pin this. Because we don't want it moving. If it moves, uh, it won't line up on the bottom here. All right, let's try that again here. Here we go. Okay, so that gives us a solder joint right there. And then we're going to do one on the top right here. And we're going to come down and we'll put one down here. So that gives us one set of two here. And this is what you're looking for right here. You're looking for a nice clean edge. There's a little bit of show through right there. It was just a bubble of, uh, of uh, solder flux. So that's the one. It's going to start. It'll hang like on an angle like this when we get the rest of them together. I have another jig that we'll put these together on. But for right now, that's how we're going to put them together. So we're going to take, we'll take another pair. We're going to put it in here like this. Put it in, put it in there like that. We're going to take and pin it down. Push that all the way over. Take and flux it. I'm just going to put one rare right now because I want to make sure that it's going to line up where we want it. So this one here is going to go like this. This next one will go like this when they're together. That'll start to make our twirler. So that's where we want it. So I'm just checking that so that I don't accidentally solder them upside down and have our area where we want we want all these square all these squares in the bottom of it or they'll end up right in the middle so that that's the way we want it so we're just taking tack it one more time just like that so there's our second Second one, and we'll do our last one here. So that goes in there against our stop. That little ledge there is what creates the gap here. So when we solder them together, we don't have a problem with uh, them bleeding over. All right, take our iron, we'll tend it here real quick. I'm pushing that down tight. Now see, this one's backwards here. That's not what we want. We want this over here, I almost soldered it in the wrong place. So since I soldered it, since I flexed the other side there, good thing I was watching what I was doing, because when we get ready to put it together, you're gonna go like, why doesn't this work? There's what we want. Okay, and we'll put some right here on the edge here again. Did 
There we go. So your first thought is probably since we just kind of tax out of those, it's not going to be very strong. By the time we get all six of them put together, uh, it's going to be extremely rigid. So you don't have to worry about that. So when we come back on the next little video clip, I'm going to show you how to put them together. I have a jig that I made for that, and uh, we'll be able to position the camera uh, back up on our uh, stand where we can see what that's doing. And uh, But uh, thanks to my wife, she came out and shot this little video for us. So that gives you an idea of uh, how these are all going to work out together. So here again, you can see we got a nice clean area through here. So thank you very much, wife, for coming out. You're welcome. Okay, so I'm back. Uh, so we're ready to put them in our jig. Uh, the jig is just made out of some old junk two by fours. Uh, I did put three of them together up and down. So if I want to make one larger than four inches, I can go here. Uh, because we're doing lead, you notice I've got a little ledge right here. And that little ledge is to take up the gap when we put our next panel in here so that they can solder right in the seam here. Uh, when, you, when you do do this, uh, this is the this is the number one piece right here, right here where we're going to solder the next panel on. I've taken a file and I've knocked down any high spots on it so that so that will uh, sit in here like this. It's going to sit on top of these ledges right like that. And then the next piece that goes in here is this one right here. And I've done the same thing here. I've come along with a file and I've knocked off those edges so you can pre fit this to make sure that this is going to fit right where you want it without any big gaps in it, right? Like that, that's what you want. You kind of want these angles here to line up where they are. So there, we'll just take and flux that. Here again, we're gonna, we're gonna tack fuse this just right in the middle here. When we get it all soldered together, then we'll come back and we'll do a, a more serious solder job on it. So I'm just gonna put this in here like this. Just like that. Here again, the next side that goes in is this one here. Here again, I've hit that with a file so that this will find, slide in here like this. This is a critical area right here you wanna watch, right here, where these come together right here. Be sure they come together close enough so when you solder them, you won't have a gap right there. So that's a critical area right here to make sure that they're in here. There's a little bit of a gap right here, I see. Let's see what we can do to fix that. Sometimes you're going to end up with a little bit of a gap. Uh, looks like I got a little high spot right here with this taken. Get that with just a little bit file right there. That took care of it. Okay, so I've got this pushed together right in here real tight. So we're going to take here, and I'm just going to solder this one again, spot solder it. I'll move this over here so we can see it here. I'm going to just spot solder it right here. Now, if you watch some other videos on spinners, you'll see that they're soldering this one here on the... Uh, they leave it down up and down here. It's hard to solder vertically up and down like that. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to take it out and I'm going to spin it around here like this. And now here's the side that we need to solder right here. It's sitting flat now where we can get to it easier or easier. I'm going to solder that up, push this down nice and tight. I'm going to hold this like this. Am I going to be in the way? Yep. Yeah. I'm going to hold this like this. How can I do that? So I know what I'll do. I want to be sure this is pushed in tight. So we'll take a couple pins here and we'll take, stick them in the two by four right here because I want to push that in tight. Always makes it a little bit hard when I'm doing the videos because the camera is mounted right above the workbench and sometimes you interfere with it. So here we go. And we're just going to solder right here where this joint's at. There we go. So that's our spinner right there. 
the angles apparently, uh, when they're hanging, catch the wind just enough and they will still turn very slowly. If you have a real, uh, just a real soft, easy breeze, they'll turn all the time. If you just have a little bit of gust every once in a while, they'll turn. Uh, I haven't had one in a real strong wind, so I don't know. I don't know if they, uh, if they really would spin really freely or not. Or, uh, but we could give that a try if we had some real strong wind. We don't have very strong wind here. But uh, the other thing that a lot of people do is they buy an inexpensive uh, wind chime turner, and you can find them on Amazon and so forth. They're about ten dollars a piece. They run on a, a single D battery. And uh, you just hook them up to your to your chain, and they uh, they turn about 20 revolutions per minute. So that gives you a nice uh, a nice uh, turning effect here. So we'll move this out of the way, and so we can look at our project right here. Here's what it's going to look like when it's all together. Uh, the hole in the middle here, you could do a couple things there. One, if, if you wanted to, you could take and you could uh, uh, put a jewel over the front of it here. Uh, leave it open or whatever you want to. If you see right here, we have a we have a little bit of a gap right here. Uh, I'm, I've got some clips. If you watch any of my other videos, um, the clips are made up of uh, some paper paper clips, the old fashioned paper clips here. And what I've done is I've turned it. This is rolled over. Normally, I've turned it back over, so I've created these little fingers right here, and so. I can take these fingers and they go between the cane and the glass and they pull that together. Now, if you look at it right here, see now it's closed that up. Now I can take and solder it there and it won't, it won't have that gap going through there. Uh, same way up here, there's a little bitty, a little bit one right here. I don't know if you can see it there or not. Right here, there's a little gap. There it is. We can take and put a clamp on here and we'll take and pull that out. So I pulled it in tight here, so now it doesn't it doesn't have any any uh, light coming through it. Those are kind of cosmetic things. Uh, probably ninety percent of the people that look at these things will never know or never even care that it's got a little bit of a gap in it. But uh, I always kind of like to try to uh, clean them up if I can a little bit. So since I got the clips on these two, I'll show you what I'll do. I'm just going to take a little box uh, here again. Just take a little prop, and I'm going to just hold it right here. And I'm going to take my solder, come down here on the joints. And here again, you don't want to, you, you could, but I'm not going to. You don't want to solder that whole thing up solid. Uh, first of all, it, it's difficult to make it look halfway decent. And the second of all, it's not necessary. So I'm just going to take and tin my iron right here. And I'm just going to set it right in here on this joint. Just like that, and I'm going to come down here and do the same thing here. And most of these that I've made, I pantene them. So if you're familiar with pantene, uh, if you if you don't like the way the solder joints look, uh, pantene hides a lot of that. So that works out real well. We'll pantene this one, and I'll show you how to do it. So uh, give you a, give you an idea what it's going to look like. So. Uh, this has been uh, been fun to work on. I'll go ahead and uh, go offline. I'll solder up the rest of them. I just want to show you how we can clean that up a little bit. We'll come back and we'll take a look at any sharp edges we've got here. We can take an emery board and we can go ahead and uh, clean it up if we need to. So uh, I'll be back in one second here and uh, we'll take a look at uh, the finished product. Okay, well, we're back. We got the... Uh, Spinner all soldered up now. We remember we didn't solder the backside, so I've come through here and I've soldered up all the joints now on all all six sides here. So uh, the project's coming out really well. We're going to pantene this now, and I'll show you how I do it. There's a lot of different ways to do it. Um, I'm taking a, a Scotch Brite pad, and I've already gone over this real good, and I've shined this all up. Uh, so uh, people use steel wool; they use all kinds of different things to do this with. So uh, the Scotch Brite, I've had pretty good luck with it. So uh, you want to you want to really go over it good though, because you want uh, to get any oxidation or any fingerprints or anything off of it that uh, that may have uh, gotten on it while you were making it, the flux from your solder, um, because that will make your pantene come out kind of splotchy looking. 
So I put a just a, a, a trash bag on here to keep it off my workbench. But after you get it uh, shined up, I've already went over it real good earlier before we got on back on the camera. So uh, we're going to go ahead and, and put this on. Uh, what I do is I take the, my Pantene, put it, it's already in a bottle. I just put a spray bottle cap on top of it. This is uh, uh, for uh, solder and for lead. And I just spray, take and spray some, this one gets stuck sometimes, get it going here. I just spray some Pantene on the project. You don't have to do the whole project, just, there we go. Just like that. And then I have a brush here. This brush is dedicated to doing nothing but Pantene. And after I, after I spray it on there, I take the brush and I work it in to the, uh, to the lead and the solder. Seems to help, uh, help it to, to stay nice and black. If you don't do this, it kind of can get splotchy on you and uh, doesn't look real, real good. Uh, putting more Pantene on it and going over and over it doesn't seem to help it either. So, so you just uh, uh, want to just put it on as, it, as you can get it a little bit here. You can get, pick it up off your, off your uh, plastic tablecloth here or, or in this case a trash bag. So I'm going to spray this some more. This isn't the greatest spray bottle, but it's going to have to do. It's all I got. By pantining these, uh, because there's so many solder joints on it, it kind of helps hide some of those, so it, uh, you don't uh, you don't have a lot of trouble with uh, with your solder joints. Uh, if you're brand new brand new to uh, leaded glass and you're having trouble with uh, with your soldering, this uh, also helps hide some of the the uh, the goopy solder joints if you have some. So uh, don't uh, don't be afraid to go ahead and pantene your projects. Some people prefer to do all of them. So we're just going to keep going over this. After we get this all Pantene, I'm going to let it sit for about 10 minutes. And then I'm going to take another spray bottle and I got real cold water in it. And I'm going to spray it off with the cold water. And then from there, I'll go outside and I'm going to put it in a bucket of, bucket of water with some Dawn liquid soap, just a couple, three drops. And I'm going to scrub it down real good and the project will be done. And we'll show you what kind of hanger or chain we're going to put on it. And then we'll take it outside in the, in the breeze. If we have some breeze, uh, we'll, we'll fire it up and let it go. If we don't have some breeze, I do have some, some uh, turners. You find them on Amazon. There's a whole bunch of them. They're about $10 a piece and you can get one to turn this for you. All right, so that looks pretty good. So we just let that sit now. Just kind of sweep this up a little bit. Put that there and I'll get a paper towel here and uh, wipe this all up. Okay, so we'll be back in a, in a few minutes. We'll let this sit and uh, I'm gonna wipe it down with cold water. Okay, well, we're back. We got it all pantined up now, so it came out really nice. You can take a look at it here. So it has a nice black color to it. And uh, I kind of put some uh, polish on it to shine it up real nice. So the last thing we need to do is we need to put a, a chain on it to hang it by. And the chain I'm using is a 16-gauge uh, jack chain. It's an open-loop chain. It just Each loop you can open up and move it around. On the end that's going to hang under the uh, hanger, it has a, uh, a number 11 split ring on it. And down at the bottom here, I've got a ball bearing swivel here. This is a, uh, used in, in the fishing industry. Uh, you can find these uh, online. Uh, I use the ball bearing one rather than the regular fishing because these spin much easier. And it's got a, a, number, a number 10 split ring on it. And what we're going to do, we're just going to take, I have a little tool right here. I'm going to open this up like that. And I'm going to take and insert it in our hanger, just like that. Then I'm going to take our 
long nose pliers here and just walk it around. And there we go. So we got our hanger all ready to go. So our spinner is ready to go. Uh, we're going to take it out. All right, here's our project all done now. So I've got it hanging in the uh, patio area. So uh, it was a fun project to make. I hope you guys will give it a try. It's uh, not that difficult. Uh, putting it together can be a little tricky, but if you just take your time, it'll come out very nice for you. Uh, you can make any kind of designs you want on it. Uh, most of the ones that you've seen in this uh, particular video are just things that uh, I've kind of dreamed up. A lot of them are made of scrap glass, so it's a good way to get rid of some scrap glass. So if you have any uh, questions or comments, uh, just send them to my channel and I'll give you a reply on it. So uh, we'll see you on the next video. I appreciate you subscribing to my channel if you haven't already. Thanks for watching. Bye now.